Hey guys, George here. There are 180 episodes of Steven Universe, plus a movie, and I am going to rank all of them right here, right now, today, right now. Now, you may be wondering, why am I doing this? Well, it's because Sophia told me to, so thanks, Sophia. Thanks for putting me through this. Now remember, this is my personal list. So if you see something you disagree with, you know, comment it down below. Let's have a civil discussion. But that's probably not gonna happen because you're all gonna agree with me because, you know, I'm so likable and agreeable and persuadable and, you know, a little bit sexy too. And guys, we are about to hit 30,000 subscribers, which is just insane. Thank you guys so much. And if you haven't subscribed and you like me, go ahead. That's it. Thank you guys. Now let's get started with the list. And where's a better place to start than with this? Okay, so what is the worst episode of Steven Universe ever? Onion Trade. It's Onion Trade. Guys, I hate this episode. For those of you who like Onion, stop pretending. He's a little fucking brat. I hate the way the show makes him this, you know, super powerful being that can, you know, take on the gems. No, he just needs a little spanking. Okay, let's just move on because I'm gonna keep going. Oh, next one is Onion Gang, so. Guys, I don't care about Onion. Why would I care about his friends? And also, why is Onion friends with freaking Frisk from Undertale? You may think I'm being a little too harsh, but I just really don't care about this character. He steals Steven's chips all the time. Like, how do more people not hate him? Okay, next up is Shirt Club. I feel like it's just not the quality that season two was. This feels like a season one episode, you know? To think that this episode aired like six episodes after Jailbreak is crazy. Next, I got a very special episode. This is our first episode from Steven Universe Future. And who would have guessed? It's a fucking another Onion episode. House guests managed to make Greg completely unlikable, which I did not think was possible. And like I talked about in my ranking every song, has one of the worst songs of the series. Future Boy Zoltron, I just don't care about Mr. Frowny. He's just a very frustrating character to me. Yes, him and Mr. Smiley are cute, but it's like, I didn't need 12 minutes of this, okay? To think that this episode came directly after Lars fucking died in space is crazy to me. And I get, you know, it's him coping with losing Connie and just trying to help people to feel better about himself. But Steven, local politics do not matter right now. Your friend is in space and is pink. Next is Rock Naldo. I remember when everybody thought that this was going to be like a whole new gem because they posted like a little teaser for the episode and then it was just Ronaldo. You know, sometimes I can forgive Onion for being a little shit because yeah, he is just a kid. But Ronaldo is just an annoying ass dude. Hence why he's in the F tier. All right, so I know a lot of people that actually like kindergarten kid. What is that one show called? Coyote and Bird. I just don't like the whole Roadrunner bit, okay? <laughs> Paradise, you're so much better than this. If you can make a robot in like five seconds, you cannot get tricked by this little bird thing. Speaking of bird, we have a bluebird next. God, I'm so good at transitions. I don't like bluebird. Why is it British? The best part of this episode is when it gets killed. Oh no. So my last F tier episode is Know Your Fusion, which is kind of just like a personal thing to me. I mean, it is a good episode. I really like the idea of Smokey Quartz exploring her insecurities because, you know, that's kind of Steven and Amethyst's thing. But I feel like they could have done a better story than some fourth wall meta thing. Okay, that's the end of F tier. How many episodes was there? There was 11 episodes and like three of them were about Onion. Why was there, why was there three episodes about Onion? Now let's move on to the- <laughs> All right, so first one in the E tier, we got Guidance from Steven Universe Future. I just thought this episode was kind of frustrating. Maybe I just don't like Smoky Quartz. I don't know. Next is Garnet's Universe. Guys, this episode is, is fucking useless, okay? It's not even one of those episodes that are like, you know, fun, but filler. It's just like, you can just completely skip it and get nothing out of it. Horror Club is a cool episode. I love the little Lars and Ronaldo bit. I don't know, something about it was just frustrating to me. I, I just think I don't like Ronaldo, to be honest. For every good thing that's out there, there's its cheap, cheap, little copy. I just don't think it was needed. Room for Ruby. Okay, listen, let's be real here. The riders just needed the Ruby ship gone so it could be harder on the gems for the future arcs. Next, we got Rising Tides and Crashing Skies, which wouldn't you know is another Ronaldo episode. I will say this is my favorite though. I love the little YouTube bit that they got going on. We also get to see the worst two characters interact with each other. How do you feel about the crystal gems attracting an onslaught of dangerous space beings? Do you feel safe? Hey! All right, that's enough for E. We actually got not a lot there. Let's move on to... I do like how this episode explored Amethyst's character. You know, it really does show her insecurity well, but I think there are better Amethyst episodes. Together Breakfast, good season one episode, but God, Steven was just really annoying, which you know, it's season one Steven, of course he is. We all love the little guy, the little booger. Restaurant Wars is fun, you know? I also like that we get to see Ronaldo get broken up with. Think about it, he's punched a child before, so he deserves this. Ooh, we're going fast, baby. Let's keep, let's keep this pace up, okay? Your Mother and Mine was basically just a recap of everything that we thought Pink Diamond was about. 
because then of course soon after we get the actual you know plot twist of pink diamond so that's why it's on the d tier it's just recap to make the plot twist even more crazy i guess arcade mania is a fun episode it was cool to see garnet you know actually trapped because of her future vision but you know what's better than arcade media for ibo i want you guys to know that d doesn't mean really d doesn't mean bad this episode was so funny i just didn't like how naked steven was in it that's why i got Knocked down a few tiers. Steven Floats is a good episode, but it, it feels like a season one episode, but it's in like season three. I think it might just because Steven discovers a new power in this episode, but I don't know. It just felt so out of place. Like they, it felt like if they just moved it to season one, it would have fit better. Kiki's Pizza Delivery Service was a fun episode. It had such a nice shot. Like, look at that. It looks amazing. I love the Evan Galleon reference too, but I do think that there's just better towny episodes. Back to the Kindergarten was cute. It was a cute episode. I just feel terrible for Paradise every time I see this episode. Secret team is honestly really underrated but the fact that garnet could be doing this like why wasn't she doing that while fighting the diamonds what sadie killer and the big show i'm kind of grouping these together because they're both about sadie and i'm sorry i love sadie but i don't care about her band arc okay i love that she quit the big donut but i wish we would have focused on lars a bit more i think his arc throughout the show was just a little more interesting considering that you know he died <laughs> First episode in C tier is Dugout. We get to see a bit more of Mr. Mahesh Warren's character, which I don't think anybody expected, but it was nice. And it's a good first episode arc to the whole, you know, Aquamarine and Topaz kidnapping people. Too short the ride. I love this little towny episode, but I don't like how oblivious Steven and Amethyst are to Peridot being upset. I feel like by this point of the series, they could be a little more aware. I also love that Peridot has Twitter. That's fucking awesome. I just feel like not a lot happened in pool hopping. Steven got a cat, which was cool. Garnet showed some vulnerability, but I just feel like it could have been handled better. For example, in season one, Garnet talking about how scared she was about Peridot coming back was done so much better than this. Rose's room was a nice introduction to this setting, but I think there are better episodes that take place in Rose's room, which we will get to. I love seeing Lars kind of revert back to his teenager self in this episode because it's realistic. People don't automatically change. Lapis was so mean in this episode. Listen, I love Lapis, okay? She's my favorite character. I'm getting a tattoo of her next week, which actually I can probably show it on the screen because it's probably done by now. Okay, guys, so it's actually not done. My tattoo artist's baby kept throwing up so we had to cancel the appointment. But I keep mentioning this lapis tattoo throughout the video and it's really embarrassing because I don't even have it yet. So what I did instead was just take a screenshot of my arm and then I photoshopped the design on there to make it look like I have the tattoo. So just pretend it's on there and it's real so the bit works because this is really embarrassing, guys. Okay, thank you. Which isn't it cool, guys? Comment down below if you think that's cool. <laughs> comment, comment that. I know when this episode first released, it frustrated so many people. Obviously, I get lapis wanting to escape because she has so much trauma tied with the diamonds, but it was frustrating. I definitely feel like Drop Beat Dad is a C tier episode, which doesn't mean it's bad, but it's not one of the best. I do love Sour Cream finally loving his stepdad in the end. That was sweet. Joking Victim is so good purely for this line. After all I do for you, you lie to me so you can sneak off with some other girl and other boys. <laughs> the new Crystal Gems was a fun little episode after the whole zoo arc. Usually with Steven Universe, after they have these long traumatic arcs, they have a very good, you know, follow-up episode discovering the trauma, which they do, but this episode is also there. I just think it wasn't really necessary. I just don't really like this episode compared to it. Watermelon Steven was a fine episode. I definitely did not expect these characters to be such a prominent part of the series. But hey, what do you know? Keep Beach City Weird is a good episode purely for this. You snonster! <laughs> God, that is so satisfying. Guys, Say Uncle is so overhated, okay? I'll say it. It is the funniest Steven Universe episode ever. You can tell it was just fun to make. You can't even hate it for that. This is a better Future Vision episode than Future Boy's Ultron, and the ending scene is really emotional. I don't really vibe with Future Vision episodes. The way the story was told in this episode was kind of weird with the whole teacup thing. I know when 12-year-old me was watching this, I did not know what the fuck was going on, but I do love how this shot here <laughs> was paralleled in one of the final episodes. Which was a cool thing to do, you know? Steven's Lion is such a good introduction to Lion. So next we have like a whole batch of just future episodes. In Dreams had some really cool shots and moments. I do wish they used Peridot more in future because I think her and Steven's relationship is really interesting. Little Homeschool is such a good first episode for future, I feel like. The Steven and Jasper relationship that was formed here, I think was very well made. Little Graduation was fun. I just hate Sheb's little fucking flute thing. Prickly Pear was such a good use of Steven's powers of making like sentient plants and using that as a metaphor of him like bottling things up. And you know, it had some 
funny moments, of course. Rosebuds is so good. It ties up the loose ends of where all those rose quartz went. And I love that everybody was just completely honest saying how weird it was. Just a good direction to go with that episode. Cheeseburger backpack is a classic episode. I wanted this backpack so bad when I was a kid. Ooh, I know I would have been made fun of, but I don't care. Imagine that thing with some Jordans and a baggy tee. Oh, you'd look fresh. Steven and the Stevens was so fun. It actually probably is one of the most traumatic things Steven has witnessed too. I mean, he saw himself die like over a hundred times. That's the end of the C tier. Now we're moving on to the B. You know, obviously I enjoy all these episodes, by the way. Just, you know, some like Onion Trade really annoy me. But now we're getting into the episodes that I really enjoy. Too Far is a good Peridot and Amethyst episode. I remember so many people saw a little, saw a little fling with these two after this. Ooh, that was crazy. Ruby and Sapphire's whole like marriage arc spans between a few episodes. And this episode was basically about bringing Bismuth back because Sapphire was upset that not a lot of her friends were actually able to go to her wedding. And you know, in the arc, it fits well. I just think as an episode on its own, it kind of falls flat, which, you know, makes sense because it's a part of a big series. I love this Lars episode because it just shows how likable Steven is. And I think this was a good way of humanizing Lars, like us meeting his parents for the first time, which then sets up the later episodes of him, you know, dying, being even more terrible because we actually see his home life, you know? This is such a good Pearl episode, but you know, it's not the best one. I'll say it. I think this was a good early episode exploring fusions and insecurity, basically just what Steven Universe is about. An Onion episode that's in the B tier? That's right. I actually like this episode solely because of Vidalia. It's just cool seeing Amethyst and Vidalia interact with each other. But of course, all the onion parts I hated. Like, why do you got a rat in your mouth, dude? Why are you craving attention that much? God, this kid needs some Adderall or something. I love the Kevin episodes. It's such an interesting and different character in the Steven Universe world. And it had a good lesson at the end, you know? And it's nice seeing somebody that Steven, like, genuinely hates. Just overall a fun episode. Beta has the best Peridot and Lapis moments in it. And of course, the Amethyst versus Jasper arc was really cool. And of course, I can't talk about Beta without talking about Earthlings. Amethyst arc finally is coming to a close. She's learning to accept herself. I don't really like how they defeat Jasper though. It's so cartoony. I think they could have done something cooler. Good little arc overall. What a fun episode, you know? I love this little MAGA guy coming in and who knew Steven Universe needed a Republican character to balance out the cast a bit. No, seriously though, it was fun. It was nice exploring Greg's family. And after watching that future episode with Greg, this episode just hits more. Seeing Amethyst just get absolutely fucking rocked by Jasper was genuinely scary. But let's be honest, Stevani was a bit corny. I don't want to hear anything you say unless it's sorry. Like, come on, you did not need to be doing all that. Love Letters is the episode where Jamie basically falls in love with Garnet, and it was funny. It really reminds you that Steven and Connie are just children, and they have no idea how love works. I'm gonna be honest, this episode is just completely wiped from my brain. Like, this is some Mandela shit. Like, I, I, I swear I don't remember this episode existing as a kid. Like, what the fuck is that doohickey there? What are they doing? And yeah, you could be saying, Jordan, you could just rewatch the episode, but... Super Watermelon Island was cool. I remember this being hyped up so much. We finally get to see Malachite and Alexandra fight. But you know, back when Cartoon Network was airing this show, knowing I had to wait like two years to watch this arc finish. And then we see Jasper just slide away. God, 14 year old me was pissed. If you didn't know, Cartoon Network kind of aired these shows in things called like Steven Bombs, where they would release an episode like every day for like a week. And then Steven Universe would go on hiatus for like a year or two. So I think the reason why people hated the filler in the Townie episode was because they had to wait another two years to get an actual episode for the plot. Now that I can binge it, it's much better, but this episode is B tier because it frustrated the hell out of 13 year old me. Buddy's book was a fun way to talk about the history of Beach City, but you know what's a better episode about the history of Beach City? Historical friction. I love the whole like play bit, and Pearl being proud of Steven is so cute. Why So Blue is a fun Lapis episode in future. You know, Lapis is my favorite character. Here's that cool ass tattoo again. Ain't it cool? <laughs> Comment down below if it's cool. And Bismuth Casual was a good Bismuth episode. You know, she's not my favorite. You know, Lapis is my favorite character. Here's that Lapis tattoo I got. Comment down below if it's a cool tattoo. The Good Lars was another good episode to introduce the whole Aquamarine and Topaz arc. And I also think it's the beginning to Lars turning a new leaf. If you think about it, Lars and Steven's relationship has changed almost as much as Steven's relationships with the gems. So it's fun to see the beginning of this change. Gem Drill was such a good end to the cluster arc, I feel like. In such Steven Universe fashion, of course they don't destroy the cluster. And it even introduces some of Steven's dream powers, which he uses way later on in the series. Greg the Babysitter was a fun Greg flashback episode, but there are better ones. The Message is a good episode for Greg. I do love Greg and the gems' relationships. Like, good for you, man. You proved yourself. You got this. Just don't do another Dear Old Dad song. Remember how I said there were better Garnet episodes of seeing her break? Well, this is one of the best. Seeing the absolute terrifying realization that she was the one who caused these forced fusions was so sad. And seeing the camera change angles as Ruby and Sapphire are talking to each other, oh, that's some Wes Anderson shit right there. 
Steven Universe. I always wondered in this episode when Steven talks about other humans, like, did they plan on Aquamarine and Topaz coming in? Or they just saw that clip of Steven naming the humans and was like, you know, we could do something with this. Maximum capacity made me fucking hate Amethyst for a bit. Cause like, Jesus, dude. Like, poor Greg. I do like the ending though. It was sweet. Lars's head went a direction that I definitely could have never guessed the show would go, but it makes so much sense. It was executed well. And just that realization why Lion was pink after learning what happened to Lars, it's crazy. You know, when these writers want to make Steven Universe scary, they can make it scary. And it finally had Connie being honest with her mom, which I feel like was a realistic arc. I love these episodes about Steven and Amethyst's relationship. Steven and Amethyst's personalities really shine here. Like when Steven purposely lost in the video game and Amethyst got frustrated that he let her purposely lose. It was good. And also, I was looking in the mirror. Guys, look at my mustache. You guys like it? Come on, I'll be like Eddie Burback in a few years here. Comment down below if you like my mustache, okay? Actually, don't, dude, don't talk about my mustache. I know it's you guys are gonna make me sad. Stuck together. Okay, I love this episode because it really diverts the expectations of the viewers. You know, you see Topaz start crying after Steven and Lars have that emotional talk. And you think, oh, okay, now Topaz is gonna get them to safety and this whole thing was just swayed by Steven's pacifism again. But no, then Aquamarine catches them and they still lose. It just shows that the writers know the viewers' expectations and they can play with it. I just think that's good storytelling. I think this was a good way to introduce Alexandrite's character. Just in a fun little slice of life episode. You know, Steven's gotta meet his, his girlfriend's parents, come on. And I honestly really like how Connie is scared to be honest about how Steven's family really is because it's realistic. You know, to me, it doesn't make her unlikable. It makes her a real person that's worried about other people's opinions, especially people like her parents, which in her case, she values her parents' opinions so much. It's something that she does not want to lose. So I think that's just an underrated character arc that she goes through. The question shows that Zach Bryan does not need to keep making country music because Ruby just ended his whole career right here. And also seeing her propose is cute. Come on, come on. This episode proves that even the most hated characters in Steven Universe can have some likable qualities to them. You just love to hate this guy, come on. I also do love Steven and Connie's conversation at the end here, and I love how Kevin just keeps referring to Lion as some dog. Alone Together is such a good introduction for Stevani's character, and I do love the underlying themes of consent. Back to the Moon is such a good episode. All the Ruby moments are amazing. The pink diamond reveal here was crazy. And who would have guessed the ending? I did not expect Steven to get sucked into space. That is crazy. This episode was after Steven revealed to everybody that he was pink diamond, now blue and yellow are on his side. And obviously, you know, season five was rushed and blah, blah, blah. You want to know why the real reason this episode is so low? Because look at that face. Why, why the fuck did they draw her like that? I don't like that. I like Together Alone as a reflection of season one's Alone Together. It has a lot of good moments in it. Gem Glow, the first episode of Steven Universe. What an iconic episode. You got the Cookie Cat song, Steven summoning his shield, but a little behind the scenes, a little, little fact if you didn't know. I think this episode was released as episode one of Steven Universe when actually it was made to be episode two. So the real episode one, in my opinion, Opinion is a better introduction to the series, which we'll get to later. But now we're moving on to tier A. Wait a second, that's not, that's not tier A. Oh my god, that's the, that's the sponsor of this video. Whether you're looking to enhance your existing skills or explore new passions, Skillshare has got you covered. From graphic design and video editing to business and technology, or to even watercoloring, Skillshare offers a wide range of classes taught by experts. Personally, I've been really into the Notion Masterclass that Skillshare has, and it really helps maximize my productivity and organization, and it's genuinely been so good to me. Because I used Notion before this, and, and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good. But now with this class, Class, I learned the skills to help me out with YouTube and school and just life in general. Skillshare has many creative career focused classes as well, such as freelancing, entrepreneurship, marketing, social media, pretty much anything you can think of, Skillshare has. And the step-by-step -step lessons make it easy to follow along, and I love that I can learn at my own pace. Now here's the exciting part, you ready? Skillshare is offering the first 500 of you guys to use my link in the description and get a one month free trial of Skillshare. That means you can explore as many classes as you want completely free. All you have to do is click the link in the description below and claim your free trial. And by signing up, you're not only helping yourself, but you're also helping the channel. So a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and a huge thank you to you guys for watching. Now, back to the video. <laughs> I really enjoyed Beach Party. I think it's the first time in the series we really see the gems and the humans interact, and it was fun. Alone at Sea is a Lapis episode I actually enjoyed because it really explores the feelings of being in a toxic relationship and the aftermath that that does to somebody. Friendship is the episode where Garnet and Pearl finally make up after that whole sardonyx 
ordeal, and it was very rewarding. And also seeing Peridot miss her foot was crazy. The theories were off the charts back then. I remember, I was an, I was an OG. This is the episode where Steven kind of freaks out about having a secret sister. When really, Rose just made another VHS tape in case that Steven was a girl. I really enjoy this episode because it shows how unhealthy Steven is. Like, even before Future, we just see that he constantly spirals himself into mental turmoil. I mean, look, he's literally dissecting his mom's VHS tape. That is really sad. Now we're only falling apart in such a good way of humanizing Rose. Because, you know, the episode previously, it might have made you hate Rose. And I don't know, maybe you still hate Rose even after this episode. I actually know a really cool guy that made a video about whether or not Rose was a good person. And that really cool guy has two thumbs pointing at him right now, so. <laughs> so Many Birthdays is one of my favorite season one episodes. Like, God, why was it actually so terrifying? This is the episode where we first see Sardonyx, and I remember freaking out at the time. Steven also catches Pearl lying to Garnet, which was very scary. God, this episode had one of the saddest moments of the whole series. The whole zoo arc was probably my favorite in the entire show. And it also had some of the funniest bits. Like, what a good beginning to the whole zoo arc. Gemcation was honestly such a fun episode, because I feel like it's so realistic for a teenage boy to be glued to his phone when some girl's mad at him. Like, of course Steven would be so upset. And yeah, he had such a traumatic experience in space, but of course this is gonna be the thing that's on his mind the most. I just think it was really realistic and well done. Also, Pearl being bit by a snake was so funny. Keystone Motel was such a good episode. I like that they visited Pennsylvania because, hey, I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm a Quaker. I'll admit it, I'm a Quaker. I love the storytelling of this episode. It really just threw me into a loop the first time I watched it. And the part with Connie and Steven at the end, oh my god. So sweet. This was honestly such a good story in Rose's room. The other Connie was terrifying, but you know what Steven Universe episode was more terrifying? Cat Fingers. One of the most classic episodes, I feel like, from season one. God, season one was just scary for some reason. I love the storytelling in this episode, too. It's a good recap for Peridot's arc. I love anecdotal storytelling sometimes. Just a good, refreshing way to tell a story and really let the character shine rather than action. Bubble Buddies was such a good way to introduce Connie and Steven together. I remember being terrified when this episode first came out, like being genuinely afraid for all these characters. God, this arc was so good, too. I do like the zoo arc more, but close second. Close freaking second. Monster Buddies was such a good, cute episode. And after learning that these creatures are actually old gems, really just elevates it to another level. But you know what's better than Monster Buddies? Monster Reunion. What a good way to bring back Centipedal. And a good way to make the diamonds terrifying. Seeing her cry is so sad. Tiger Millionaire is a classic Steven Universe episode. And way better than Tiger Philanthropist. I love me some good classic wrestling. Which if you didn't know, I actually used to wrestle, so. And yeah, to be honest, it was just like this. Chili Teat has such good character moments in it. And of course, the whole Lapis and Jack thing was crazy at the time. I think I Am My Monster could definitely have done better. If it was animated more dramatically, it was longer, just a lot of things. It kind of fell flat to me. This episode had such good Pearl moments. I do remember before this episode aired, the title of it got released and everybody thought like the diamonds were coming and everybody was trying to escape Beach City. But then it turned out to be a good episode about Pearl, you know, getting some bitches. Good for her, you know? Lion 2 is one of my favorite Connie and Steven episodes. I love that they're just trying to see a movie together and then they do this big old fight and they still get to watch the movie at the end. So sweet. Story for Steven was such a good way to tell us about Rose and Greg's relationship, but it's not my favorite flashback episode, which we will get to. Can't Go Back has some of the best shots in the series. And I love me a Lapis episode. The song was so good, and that ending was crazy. This is the beginning of the best arc of the series. God, the zoo arc is so good. The beginning of this episode just shows how much Steven has grown throughout the series. You know, he argues with Garnet, and then seeing Greg actually get taken away, like, that was crazy. Jim Hunt, again, has some good character moments. It seems so classic, Steven Universe, you know? they were just fighting some monsters, but then Jasper showed up and, and that was really scary. Sadie's song is so good, just purely for that ending scene. Steven Slade, what a fun direction for Lars's character to go. Yeah, like if you told me watching season one that Lars would turn into this, I would have never believed you. Next, we got a few future episodes again. Volleyball was such a nice way to reflect on Pearl's story and get some more insight on Pink Pearl. That one scene in Growing Pains where Steven learns that all his mental health is finally catching up to him. God, that was done so well. And we never saw that in a kid's cartoon. I know some people hate Mr. Universe and just dunk on Steven for crashing the van, but God, the way this explored Steven and Greg's relationship was so good because neither of them are right. And you know, I actually know a really cool guy that, that talks about this whole relationship in a video, so <laughs> he actually has a lapis tattoo too, so comment down below if you think that's cool. Snow Day was such a fun episode. You know, the core four got together again. I was so cute. Moving on to Bismuth, which I think was like a 20 minute special. What a fun way to introduce a new gem. And the part where Steven had to kill her, that was, yeah, I was not expecting that. And here's where I'm going to put the Steven Universe movie, because listen, the Steven Universe movie is just so digestible. It's not even 90 minutes, which is so nice. You know, movies
movies are too long these days. And all the songs are good. It's such a nice, easy watch. And at the top of the A tier, I have Giant Woman. I think this was a good turning point for Steven Universe. It really introduces the songs. And I love the Pearl and Amethyst relationship. All right, we got two more tiers. We got S tier and SS tier. <laughs> S tier are the episodes that, you know, I think are objectively good. And the SS tier are the episodes that I just, I just enjoy. Starting off the S tier, we have Steven the Sword Fighter. Introducing the fact that gems poof in such a terrifying way like this was genius. Because think about it, they could have just used some thrown off dialogue. Like, oh, the gems don't actually die. We, you know, disappear for a little bit. But no, they made you think that Pearl died. Just good storytelling and why it's an S tier. Off Colors is the episode where Lars died. And we finally get to see him finish his arc. Which was perfect. I loved it. The answer, you know, I just have to put an S tier. It's how Ruby and Sapphire met. You know, how could I hate this episode? Now, Warp Tour, I feel like is a little out there to be an S tier. But personally, I think it's... It's amazing. It's the first time we see Peridot and it makes you terrified of her. I also love how Steven and Pearl argue in this. Three Gems and a Baby is probably one of my favorite flashback episodes. You can really just feel the tender emotions that everybody is going through after recently losing Rose. And knowing that Pearl almost basically murdered Steven is, is really scary. And of course seeing Greg grieve. That's, you know, come on, that's depressing. Hit the Diamond is so classic Steven Universe, I feel like. Like, of course Steven is gonna play diamonds with a bunch of aliens instead of fighting them. What's your problem is up there in the S tier for me because it really shows how Amethyst and Steven's relationship evolved and how she's basically the most mature gem out of the three, which I think Amethyst deserves the title of. We've seen her grow so much. I Am My Mom is up there as one of the most terrifying episodes. Seeing Topaz almost murder Jamie, like that's crazy. And then of course seeing Steven's self-destructive behavior. And after Future was released, this was even more sad. Mirror Gem is one of those perfect episodes of Steven Universe. Like when this shit happened, you know Steven was fucked. You know he's getting those belt whoopings after this. And just the fact that Lapis was so angry at the gems, it really made you doubt if the gems were actually good people. Same old world is just another beautiful episode of Steven Universe. It's probably my favorite Lapis episode. We finally get to see her backstory, and we get to see Steven show her the beauties of the world, which is so sweet. I feel like you could show somebody this episode of Steven Universe without them ever watching an episode, and they would get the gist of the whole series. We Need to Talk is the best flashback episode. Oh my god. That conversation at the end is so well done because it makes you realize like yeah rose is an alien and greg is a human i feel like greg's problem with not being respected in a relationship is something that we don't see represented in media like ever i cannot think of another story this is one of the more nuanced episodes of steven universe i feel like that you know i watched as a kid and i didn't really get it and now that i'm older i watch it and i'm like damn maybe i am glad that my parents got a divorce laser light cannon is such a good first episode of steven universe it shows off greg well it shows off the beautiful colors of the show it shows off the gems personality so well it introduces rose so well. It's just so well. Come on, it's good. The test is definitely an S tier episode. You know, I actually know this guy that made a really cool video about the test. You know, he's really cool. He's, I think he's got like abs and pecs and stuff. He actually has a, a lapis tattoo. I love the way this episode was told. It's basically Steven telling a story about how his powers work, and then in the end, we see in the present time his powers actually working. And of course, it's with Connie, which is so cute. Jungle Moon had such a good flashback to Pink Pearl, and again, I like the storytelling elements. The way they introduce it through a dream, but Steven was fused with Connie, so Yellow Diamond, you know, Pink Diamond's parental figure, was shown as Mrs. Mahesh Warren. That's genius! I couldn't think of that. I love the, like, Disney princess vibes of Familiar, and Steven rocks the outfit again. You know, obviously people can say what they want about season five, but this was overall just a good episode. I think Space Race is really Steven Universe at its best. You got the beautiful animation, emotional story, mysterious world building, relationship exploration, just a good episode. Storm in the Room is the best Rose Room episode. Seeing Steven lash out at his mom is just absolutely sad and probably therapeutic for a lot of people as well. Island Adventure is another classic Steven Universe episode. They have one of the best songs in it. The Lars and Sadie moments are perfect. I think this is one of the best ways to mix the human relationships with the gem relationships. And I love that Sadie gets a scar here and it's seen throughout the whole rest of the series. Back to the Barn is another one that just has beautiful animation. And Pearl being one of my favorite characters, she shines through this episode, which is why it's up there as one of the best for me. This is the first time we see the Rose tape, which was just beautiful to see. And the character moments again are just so sweet. And of course I love Lion in this episode. Okay, we got another future batch coming up. We got Fragments when Steven killed Jasper for a bit. This episode was so good, seeing Steven just take out all his rage. Obviously he's not supposed to do this, but it felt kind of good. Steven finally releasing his anger that he had like built up through the whole series. And of course, I'm glad Jasper came back. Together Forever was so cringy, but so good because like, of course, Steven would try to propose and Connie handled it perfectly. Everything's fine. That last couple minutes of the episode. Oh, I love that there was no music. It was pure just tension. Seeing Steven just absolutely break down finally after 20 episodes 
episodes. You know, this is my Joker. This Steven is my Joker. This is literally me. I don't know why, but I just love the way they actually prove Peridot in this scene. Like, it's not pretty or powerful at all. You see Pearl, like, sneak up on her, and then Garnet literally squeezes her. It's so realistic, I feel like. Like, this is how they would actually defeat her. Just fumbling and overwhelming her. And then, of course, seeing Peridot in her true form was something I don't think anybody expected. And, of course, it's the beginning of her redemption arc, which I think was one of the best things in this series. When It Rains is just a continuation of Peridot's arc. I think this is a beautiful episode, and another one that you can show people who've never seen the series, and they can definitely get the gist of the series. It could have been great in Message Received. I'm just putting these two together. What a good way to end Peridot's arc. I remember freaking out at Peridot yelling at Yellow Diamond. I remember as soon as the episode ended, I like hopped on my iPad, made a little video on iMovie, and uploaded that to YouTube instantly. So, yeah, Peridot calls Yellow Diamond a quad and betrays her, and now she's a crystal gem. God, I was always destined to be a YouTuber. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the SS, which in my opinion are the best episodes of the entire series. The last episode of Steven Universe media, like, ever. It's a good ending. I think it deserves to be SS, because it really is a good send-off for Steven. Alright, reunited. I think this one just deserves to be up there for the whole Ruby and Sapphire wedding. And then finally seeing them face off with diamonds was just crazy. And of course, in Steven Universe fashion, Steven manages to talk to them instead of actually fighting them. Also, hold on. One of the best songs in the series. Steven absolutely hits those high notes. Bubbled is such a good episode to me. I mean, I mean, obviously nobody expected Steven to get sucked into space, and I think from a writer's standpoint, trapping Steven into this one little setting with, you know, an enemy was such a good way to build tension in the series. Because think about it, you stick Steven, an unstoppable object, in the sense that he can always make enemies turn to friends, and then you got an immovable object, you know, Eyeball, who just fucking hates this kid. And then that shot of Steven alone in space, and finally reuniting with the gems, was so bittersweet. And then of course we got Love Like You playing in the background. Just a good episode. It was like a little treat, you know, I didn't expect it, but it was amazing. The trial did such a good job at making the audience think that like, wait a second, yeah, pink diamond shattering does not make sense. And of course, seeing Steven interact with yellow and blue was absolutely insane. Steven's birthday is definitely up there for me as one of the best episodes because yeah, it doesn't have a crazy premise going on like the trial, but it's such a good character moment for Steven. Like of course, this 14 year old boy who was insecure about not growing up with Connie, a girl he likes, is going to try to change himself. And of course, the lesson is that you can't do that. Just a good sweet episode. Escapism is up there for me because it has the best song also known as escapism. And looking back on it, a lot of people hated the whole watermelon Steven bit. But of course, with hindsight, we know that it was all a bunch of foreshadowing. Lars and the Cool Kids really sticks out there for me, especially with it being like, what, season one? This is the first time we ever see Steven get like upset in the series, and it's such a serious moment. I think this is really the start of Lars's whole character arc that finishes in season five. Lars and Steven's relationship is one of the most underrated parts of the series, I feel like, because God, that scene was so good. Joyride is another personal favorite of mine. This is one of the best towny episodes to me. I don't even know if it counts as a towny episode, but like this is how it should be made. You finally see humans and gem tech interact, and that last shot of Garnet almost punching Steven. Oh, amazing episode. On the run, another just classic Steven Universe episode. We finally get some background on the gems, Amethyst and Pearl's emotional ass fight. God, poor Steven, bro. Ocean gem, another classic episode. I remember this shot I had as my desktop background on my shitty like 2008 computer for years, and like I didn't even know how to save an image at the time. So what I I did was I screenshotted a scene from YouTube and it was like the most blurry low res image ever but god did I love the episode so much I kept it on there. Sworn to the Sword and Mr. Greg are the best Pearl episodes of the entire series. They have such good animation and the songs are amazing. God just it's peak. This is just peak Steven Universe right here. Oh and I even got another one Rose's Scabbard another amazing Pearl episode. The ending sequence is probably the best Steven Universe media like ever. God dude. And then I got just the ending of the zoo arc up here. My favorite arc of the show. Gem Heist, the zoo. That will be all amazing. Seeing the gems destroy Holly Agate and just the tension of sneaking out. God, it was so good. Just perfect. Perfect, perfect. Change your mind. I feel like I obviously have to put up here because it is the end of the original series. That song in the end is beautiful and James Baxter fucking hit on that animation. I remember sitting on my grandma's couch watching this on cable TV and just rewinding and playing this part constantly because it was so perfect. I remember sitting there and being like, this is the end. I'm never gonna experience joy again. God, the grip this show had on me when I was a little kid. Mindful Education, I think, is the Steven Universe episode that you should show to somebody if they've never seen the series 
and they want to get into it. I just think it's a perfect representation of what Steven Universe is really about. You know, mental health and relationships and things like that. A single pale rose. God, storytelling in this was genius. Honestly, this is what the series was leading up to. Like, just the absolute turning point. And I remember people being like, oh, of course, this was so obvious, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. It was cool, okay? And I like the monkey emoji. That was funny. The Return is such a great episode. It has beautiful world building and exposition given by Greg. It really makes you terrified of what the gems can really do. And then after hearing this and knowing that gems are coming to face Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, it's terrifying. And of course, the ending scene with Steven raises his shield and then gets knocked the fuck out by Jasper. God, it's crazy to think in a few years that this guy kills her. And of course, after the return, there's Jailbreak. I know so many people that say this is the best episode of Steven Universe in history. You know, we got Garnet's song, Stronger Than You. So many beautiful moments. But you know, there's one episode that's better than Jailbreak. Full disclosure is what Steven Universe is about. You know, of course, Jailbreak is the whole spectacle of fighting Jasper and returning back to Earth. But full disclosure explores the message of Steven Universe. The aftermath of these traumatic events and what it does to somebody. Steven's whole character of driving people away is fully on display here. He hides his pain and it obviously comes back to bite him. And the song, oh, the drums, the Everybody fucking told. chorus. You know, it kind of sucks because Ronaldo's there, but it's still so amazing. What a perfect episode. I really think it's just what Steven Universe is about. And with that, we ranked every episode. God, that was a lot. My tongue hurts. My tongue is sore. That was 180 episodes plus a movie. Now, obviously, I didn't go super into detail into every episode because this video would be longer than it already is. So if you want to expand on an episode, just go ahead and comment it down below and tell me your favorite. I'm really thankful for the Steven Universe series and what it's done to my YouTube channel. And it's always so fun to come back to these videos. You know, it's so homey. But if you like my content, I have more videos that aren't related to Steven Universe, but are still absolute classics. Thank you guys for watching this video. And if you- Ow! Fuck! Here's a playlist of all my Steven Universe videos, and then here's a cool, cool video about ghost hunting. Subscribe if you think my lapis tattoo is cool. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye!